Hello everyone and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas and we are two Swedes and we love design. Mm -hmm. You all saw the title of this video and uh, the explanation behind this choice of content is I love BTS and I love design. And uh, recently I saw a video of RM in his new studio and I was pleasantly surprised when I saw that he had filled it with furniture by the Swiss architect Pierre Chanari, which he had made for the town of Chandigarh in India in the 50s. Hmm. The story behind this furniture is really fascinating and interesting, so we're gonna tell you hmm. about it right now. Let's get started. Yeah. In June of 1947, the British House of Commons passed the Indian Independence Act, which divided British India into two countries, India and Pakistan. The two new countries were granted their independence from Great Britain in August the same year. As a result of this, the northern region Punjab was split into one Pakistani and one Indian part. As the capital Lahore was passed on to Pakistan, the Indian authorities soon started to plan for a new capital called Chandigarh. The name is a compound of the Hindu goddess Shandi and Gar, which means fortress. Yeah. And because of his personal relationship with the Indian Prime Minister Nehru, I'm not going to try to say his first name because it's extremely difficult. <laughs> Uh, because of this, uh, the American architect uh, Albert Meyer was hired to do the plans for the new city. Together with the Polish architect Matthew Nowicki, he drew a superblock city based on modernist ideals. Sadly, Nowicki was killed in a plane crash before the plans were finished, and because of the death of his partner, Meyer also left the project. Suddenly, the city of Chandigarh had no chief architect. Government officials immediately started searching for someone to replace Meyer, and in the fall of 1950, the Swiss architect Le Corbusier was recruited to finish the work. He came to use much of the Meyer's original plans, but without attributing them to him. Oh, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's and nice. And the government buildings of Chandigarh, completed between 1951 and 65, are today considered iconic monuments of modern architecture. Uh, the complex was added to the UNESCO World Heritage Site List in, uh, in 2016. And now let's take a look at some of these uh, quite magnificent buildings. When these huge concrete buildings were finished, they obviously needed mm -hmm. to be filled with furniture. 
Le Corbusier wanted the furniture to be custom made for the project and turned to his cousin Pierre Chanari. The relationship between the two cousins was at the time a bit strained. During the Nazi occupation of France, uh, Pierre had joined the resistance movement, but Le Corbusier decided to work with the Nazi-supported Vichy government. At Chandigar, the two cousins, despite this, found a way to start mm. collaborating again, and Pierre was also responsible for designing a lot of houses in the city, among them mass housing and the Punjab University. Pierre had developed a range of tubular steel furniture already in the late 20s, uh, together with the French designer Charlotte Parion. And she had uh, uh, taught him a lot about furniture design, but Chandigarh was nevertheless a huge challenge. Most European designers explored the possibilities presented by modern materials like aluminum and plywood. In uh, India, Pierre was limited to local materials and not least traditional production methods. All furniture was to be produced by local craftsmen. Uh, the first prototype furniture made from wood and rope was designed for his own home in Chandigarh, uh, but these solutions turned out to be way too weak to be used in public buildings. Instead, solid teak and rosewood was used, creating robust and highly functional constructions. Most pieces were highly geometrical and standing on compass legs, a solution uh, Pierre had developed in the late 40s when creating the scissor chair produced by Knoll in the US. Yeah. During his long stay in Chandigar, Pierre designed a huge lot of chairs, cabinets, tables and lamps and mm. they were produced in thousands in factories throughout the whole region. And let's take a look at some of them. Yeah. Pierre stayed in Chandigarh when the project was finished and only rarely returned to Europe. He found peace in India and later said, The working methods that I discovered in India finally taught me self-esteem after so many failures in France. That's nice. Yeah. When he died in 1967, his ashes were shattered in Sukna Lake in the outskirts of Chandigarh. The furniture was used a couple of decades, but then gradually replaced by mass-produced furniture considered to be more modern. A lot of the works by Chanari ended up at local junkyards, uh, thrown away like rubbish. Mm. Um, in 1999, French gallery owners started traveling to Chandigarh to purchase the discarded furniture. And soon the furniture turned up in galleries and auction houses, selling for huge sums of money. In the spring of uh, 2018, uh, the auction house Philips sold a set of 10 armchairs for almost 220,000 US dollars. That's a lot of money. <laughs> and later that year, year, a pair of lounge chairs from the Punjab University was sold for over 150,000 US dollars. Yeah. And here's some other auction results.
prices resulted in an infected debate. Some people compared this with the times when Western explorers brought home important artifacts from Egypt and the Middle East to be sold to rich collectors in London and Paris. And one can argue that this was a kind of colonization. On the other hand, if Western dealers hadn't brought these furniture, they would have probably ended up uh, as trash. (laughs) And when Chandigarh got protected by UNESCO in 2016, export of furniture and other objects was banned. This makes the old furniture found on the market even more sought after. Yeah. And nowadays, some of these legendary furniture can be bought new, produced by the company Casina. In their Hommage à Pierre Chanaré collection, uh, the capital complex office share is between 2,400 and 3,600 US dollars. Mm. And the, the civil bench uh, is between six and seven thousand yeah. dollars. Uh, and the upholstered arm share, it's between four and five thousand dollars. Very expensive. They, they are very expensive. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's interesting to note also that they are called homage, homage to uh, Pierre Chanaré. So they are not exactly the no, same no, furniture. No, no. They are adapted, I think, for. Yeah. More like uh, modern uh, production methods and not this handcrafted furniture anymore. I wonder why RM chose them. Because yeah. they're expensive or mm. does he know the backstory? I don't know. Uh, uh, it's hard to tell, yeah. but uh, they are iconic pieces yeah. of design and they are seen almost everywhere. Yeah. If you look on Instagram, for example, you see them in interiors all over the world yeah, and yeah. interior all magazines. So yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, uh, something you must own if you want to show off. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. <laughs> and that will conclude this episode. <laughs> yes. Uh, and if you like this episode, yeah, please click thumbs up and subscribe. And follow us on my Instagram, where I call Scandinavian Design 101. <laughs> yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you.